is going to tell you slope, which is increasing or decreasing. Has anybody plugged in negative 3? Plugged it in yet. What did you get? Positive. Positive? Hey, by the way, in this context, what does the positive mean? Does it mean concave up, concave down, increasing or decreasing? Increasing. And so the function is going to be going up. For this whole interval, from negative infinity to negative 2, it's going up, increasing. Um, how about for 0? I think I'd probably do that on my own. Decreasing. Increasing? Yeah. Show of hands, how many people made it that far? Did you interpret it correctly for increasing, decreasing, increasing? So here's how this graph looks. You only have a good picture, don't you? You know this graph is going to do this. Watch. It's going to start from negative infinity. It's going to go up, <coughs> increasing, until it gets to x equals negative 2. Then it's going to stop. Well, not stop. <coughs> reach a climax there. Then it's going to go down until you reach 4. Then it's going to go up forever. You with me on that? That's how this graph looks. Now, we don't really know whether it does this or whether it does this, something funky, you know. The shape of that curve should be important for us as well. That's where the second derivative test comes in. So we've completed the first derivative test, told us increasing, decreasing, increasing. You probably have an idea because it's a polynomial that it is going to be concave like this and like that, but we need to verify that with the second derivative test. So right now, take your second derivative and do the second derivative test. I love second derivatives sometimes. Don't you love second derivatives sometimes? <laughs> so nice. Except when they're like that. I know so. But uh, quotient rules, oh my gosh, they're horrible. But for polynomials, love those things. Hopefully you got x equals 1 as well, yeah? So we're going to put x equals 1. Notice how when we combine these ideas, it is one number line because it's one graph. That means you've got to put this in the right spot. I can't go x equals 1. Yay. No, that doesn't work. Okay, you've got to go in between these numbers. It's like it's drawn to scale. Okay, it's, it's your graph. So put it in between the negative 2 and the 4. It's a number line after all. Now, if x equals 1 tells us our possible inflection <coughs> values, that's what that is. Let's go ahead and let's plug in some values for each interval and find out whether we're concave up or concave down. Will we plug these into the first derivative, the original function, second derivative, which one? Second derivative will give you the concavity. So take some numbers here, probably 0 and 2, plug them into the second derivative and tell me what you get, okay? So we plugged in 0. You got negative 6, well, that's negative for sure. Does that mean concave up or concave down? Yeah. This one? Good, because if you plug in something like 2, you're going to get 12 minus 6. That's positive 6. That's positive. Concave up. So we plugged in numbers in the first <coughs> derivative to give us increase or decrease. We plugged in numbers in the second derivative to tell us concave up, concave down. Uh, true or false? We have two relative extrema. True, true. true or false? Two relative extrema. True. Relative extrema means a relative max, relative min. Do we have two of those things? Yeah. yeah. One's a relative max. Where's the relative max? At x equals what number? The relative max. At negative two. You see the negative two? It's going up. Then it's going down. Picture that. Up, down. That has to be a relative max. Uh, where's the relative min? Do we know the value of those things? Not yet, but we're going to. Uh, true or false, we have no inflection points. Where is our inflection point? Okay. Here's how this tells us. To, if you read this, it reads like a graph. It says, check it out. You're starting out. You're going up, right? Increasing. How are you going up? Concave down wise. So you're going up, concave down. You're going to reach a point. Look at that. Concave down, going up. You're going to reach this point. 
It's still it's going to start decreasing. Are you still concave down? Yeah. Yes. Until you come to this value, then you're still decreasing, but you're starting to be concave up. Do you see the change there? Concave up. Then you're going to reach this point. Ah, that's going to still be concave up for the rest of the way. Concave up. But now it starts increasing again. So this reads like your graph does. Increasing, but concave down. Then you're going to be decreasing, but still concave down. Until you get to here, that's your inflection point. Concave up, but still decreasing. And then concave up, increasing the rest of the way. That tells you not only whether you're going up or down, but how you're going up or down. It would be different if it was like this, right? Increasing, concave up, that would be different. De decreasing, <coughs> concave up, that would be different. That would be a different looking graph. So this tells you both of them, and we'll get a handle on how to do this in section 3.6 all the way through. How many people feel okay with this so far? We've neglected one thing, we haven't found the points. So I want you to find your points right now. Do the relative max. Relative min. And the inflection point. Where are you going to plug those numbers into? Good. Original will give you the points. See, we said max was at negative two something, minimum was at four something, inflection point was at one something. Does anyone have the negative two yet? Fifty? Double check on that, 50? I got 60. 60? Wait, 60. What's 10, right? I mean, who cares? <laughs> okay, how about the 4? The 4. Anyone do the 4? Negative 48? Double check? Yes? Yeah, negative 48. Perfect, negative 48. And the 1? 6. Six? Six. Double check. Six. Okay. Tell me what is my relative maximum? What is it though? Sixty. Sixty is the relative max. Where does it occur? At x equals negative two. What's the relative minimum? Good. Where does that occur? Cool. The inflection point says one six. That's where the point is, that's where the concavity is changing. Feel okay about this so far? Now, before we can put all this together, we have to talk about one more section. It's kind of a long section. You see, your favorite part. We're going to go back to limits for a little bit. Your favorite. We're going to talk about limits at infinity. You see, we, we haven't done that. We've talked about limits going to a point. But we haven't <coughs> talked about what would happen if, well, we did it a little bit. We said, what happens if I'm going like this? That goes to infinity. But what happens if I take my function and go that way forever? Or if I go that way forever? Does it keep going up? Does it keep going down? Or does it tend to go to some number? We're going to, we're going to find that out with limits in this section. So in 3.5, Well, that talks a little fast, so we still have some time. 